In the temples of Apollo, often in the month of December, the effigies of Apollo would be taken down and effigies of Dionysus would be put up. This is the Saturnalia, this is Mardi Gras. All bets are off and you get to wear costumes and be whatever else you are before Lent comes back on and all the rules have to be returned. And if we don't do that, we will often have spontaneous eruptions of Dionysus. And then we're suddenly drunk at the office party. We act out in a way that is devastating to ourselves or other people. We suddenly have an affair and a business trip, although we've never, never thought that would happen. The Dionysic impulse inside of us for ecstasy will turn upon us if we don't honor it, at least occasionally, if we don't have the right attitude towards the irrational, the wild, the ecstatic. So I'm having a thought about or maybe a common thread that's coming through your experience with the dream, your sister's experience, Jung's experience with alcohol, that maybe part of ecstasy is discovering a new intensity of feeling or knowing something, knowing something new or finding something new in us or discovering like a new aspect of ourselves that we didn't even know was there. It seems like, it seems like that's maybe common to many of these experiences that we've been talking about. I think that sense, just as we said, of being different, yeah, which also brings us back to Jung and alchemy. I mean, because the great reference to alchemy is salve et coagula, which is you dissolve it, then you recoagulate it, you dissolve it, you recoagulate it. And he was talking about the personality, that every profound insight causes the personality to have to change in order to integrate it as a new building block. So Jung was looking at these symbols of transformation and particularly was interested in alchemy, but there are many symbols of transformation. By the way, he also acknowledged that tarot card images are symbols of transformation. He recognized that as well, but simply didn't choose or have the time to unpack them the way he did alchemical images, that he, he was knowing that there's something about the analytic goal, which is for the ego first to go through a lesser salutio by absorbing the shadow. So something has to break open. Sometimes that can be ecstatic, but often it's a kind of suffering experience. The next integration is integrating the anima and animus which are the latent potentials that the self is holding for us, which we then project onto other people. That's often an ecstatic saludio, that something that's wonderful and fascinating gets added to us, which is then in preparation for the announcement of the self, which is this image of the full potential of who we are, which is something that we can only talk about symbolically which has the capacity to save us, but make us more fully ourselves than ever before. When Jung talks about his creative illness in Memories, Dreams, and Reflections, he was going through a dissolution, that the identity he had before seemed to be falling apart. He was in enormous amounts of agony. He was having these incredible, intense emotional states that were tearing him apart that had no real imagery around them, which was part of the problem, is that there was no representation of it, and it just went on and on and on for nights and nights. It drove him into despair, and the thing that saved him finally was a dream. And in the dream, he saw the image of a mandala being expressed in the dream, and that was the appearance of the self, that he wasn't alone, and that something was now joining with him in the restructuring of the new personality. So the dissolution process can be agonizing, although today we're talking about dissolution through ecstasy. Dissolution through agony, dissolution through ecstasy has the similar end product, which is to make room for more unconscious material that is intimately related to you, 
and then requires you to come back together and get your feet on the ground and figure out who am I with Deb? Who am I now that I know for fact that there is an other in me that's communicating with me? What the heck do I do with that? Yes. Walking yeah. forward, like going shopping the next day with that feeling. Yeah. Jung discovers the self and then he discovers all these other inner characters in the Red Book. And he's got to figure out who he is walking forward with all this new information inside of himself. And he founds a school of psychology. You know, I appreciate that you brought up the dissolution of agony because I, I do think that before we wrap up, it is worth talking about kind of the dark side of Dionysus. And mm-hmm. it's probably most clearly shown in the Euripides play, The Bacchae. Where, uh, well, and we could we could spend a whole episode talking about this, and we probably should at some point. But Dionysus comes, and he's looking for everyone to worship him, and King Pentheus says no, right? So it's like when we uh, don't honor this impulse for ecstasy and transcendence, we get into trouble. Because here's what happens to King Pentheus is the maenads, these, these women who are driven mad by this divine ecstasy, this divine madness, they, they follow Dionysus into the hills and they revel with him. And they are so driven mad that they don't recognize Pentheus, including his own mother. And he is, is ripped to pieces because they mistake him for a stag or something. I can't remember exactly why. But it's, it, it, you know, we do lose ourselves. We are standing outside ourselves and we can lose ourselves. And that can be destructive. We can be dismembered. We can become dismembered. And as you said, Joseph, often with an aim toward reconstituting along more expansive lines so that we can contain more. But, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we don't reconstitute. Um, sometimes we reconstitute in a faulty way. And, and sometimes we do damage to others that we didn't mean to do when we were in our ecstatic state. You know, so I'm thinking of uh, drunk driving accidents. Well, all of the unconscious impulses, the irrational impulses that try to take us outside of ourselves that we repress in favor of an Apollonic orderliness. Mm-hmm. Right. Apollo and Dionysus were brothers. And... In the temples of Apollo, often in the month of December, the effigies of Apollo would be taken down and effigies of Dionysus would be put up. This is the Saturnalia. This is Mardi Gras. This is that at some point we need even a ritualized, you know, where all bets are off and you get to wear costumes and be whatever else you are before Lent comes back on and all the rules have to be returned. And if we don't do that, what you're saying is then we will often have spontaneous eruptions of Dionysus. And then we're suddenly drunk at the office party. We act out in a way that is devastating to ourselves or other people. We suddenly have an affair and a business trip, although we've never, never thought that would happen. Billy Graham is caught in a hotel with a prostitute. And this is the Dionysus, the Dionysic impulse inside of us for ecstasy will turn upon us if we don't honor it, at least occasionally. We don't have the right attitude towards the irrational, the wild, the the ecstatic. There are... It's sort of like the Scylla and Charybdis that on the one hand, we can misuse and use ersatz substances in a false quest for transcendence and Dionysian ecstasy. On the other hand, we can refuse it like Pentheus did and stay stuck in our rational, narrow, striving, goal-oriented, orderly lives and not make room for it at all, in which case there too it can come to us and be in its most destructive aspect. So how do we make room? This is a rhetorical question. How do we make room for Dionysus? How do we make room for ecstatic experiences 
that are, will be our connection to the life force. Yes, and I love how you said that, Tom. That's the litmus test. Is this really serving my life? In some ways, I think it comes down to, one, maybe at the end of this podcast, people coming to believe that this is a nutrient. Like, you need Dionysus or its equivalent. You need to cut loose. You need to get out of the box in a way that is intensely joyous to you, intensely ecstatic once in a while. And if we decide we need that, then we can shape it aesthetically. Then we can ritualize it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, once a year, I'm going to go to this fantastic tropical island and I'm going to do these Burning things. Burning Man. Burning Man. Oh my God. Perfect. Yes, exactly. It's one week That's out of the year. It is. Absolutely. And it will be what you make of it. Because it's, con- it's a conscious choice to do it. Then Dionysus is satisfied and it doesn't need to come in and ruin. Right things in order to get its due. 